let's let's talk about Warner Brothers Discovery. Warner Brothers Discovery is a new company, a company that has just come into existence. Mm-hmm. And and guys, I'm sure you have all been following this, you know, the developments. AT and T just sold <clears throat> basically Warner Media to Discovery, new company. Yeah. Tell me wh- wh- what's uh, what's going on that. here. Yeah, new logo and everything. They they they're going all out for it. Yep. Wow. Mhm. Yeah, let me cool. see if I can pull yeah. up another version. It's like very minimal. It's like it's cool, nice. I don't know. It's uh, really cute. Like. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot better than when they were advertising that they were doing the merger and they had that disgusting mm-hmm. golden bricks of a font. Yeah. Oh, I hated that. On the on the cloud background, right? Yeah. With cloud oh, background. It's worse. Yeah. Well, this isn't just a logo change. I mean, this is this is a company buying something, you know, that's been a touchstone of American culture for decades. Warner yeah. Brothers has been around for literally decades at making movies, making cartoons, um, as influential, if not more than Disney at a certain point. And now with Disney taking over as much as they are, this feels like an attempt to compete and Warner Brothers has been doing a lot to try to compete in the last couple of years, doing something like Space Jam, where you know it, they're reminding you this is every property that we own. And to a company like Discovery, honestly, I'm I'm I didn't even realize that it was big enough to buy Warner Brothers. I would have assumed that Warner Brothers was the bigger company, but oh no, it is. It would be. No, I mean, I don't mean to cut you off, but literally, no, no, I think please. most people are still doing double takes with this for that exact yeah. reason, right? Because historically, Discovery has always sort of been working its way up the chain. And right. until, I would say, maybe even five, ten years ago, Warner Brothers would probably still have been way too big for Discovery to acquire. But they've come into this new company, the Warner side, with like tens of billions of dollars of debt. And... AT&T mm-hmm. bought originally um, Warner Brothers or whatever they were called at the time for like $85 billion or something like that. And they just sold them to Discovery for like $43 some billion. And ah. so there's been a huge drop in valuation over the recent times, despite the fact that you look at all of those properties that that they have. I mean, it's insane. I mean, some this is a mix, obviously. Magnolia Network is Discovery, HGTV's yeah. Discovery. A lot of the reality television is Discovery, but Cartoon Network, Warner right. Brothers, TNT, yeah. That's TVN, which is a Polish television. I actually know that. Hey. Wait, what? It's crazy. Yeah. TVN, can you see like the blue one? The blue the one TBS? Was the, yeah, um, that's the Turner the... Broadcast Station or something like that. Is it TBS or TVN? That's not TVN. I think it says TV. It's TBS. It's TLC. It's it TBS, yeah. Oh, TVN. Yeah, no, it's blue with like yellow letters. Am I? Yeah. Oh, TVN. That's oh, TVN. I'm... It's in our. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's TV right there. Norge. So that I know that's. This is one of the Poland's biggest uh, channels. Man. So it's crazy that they even own that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like huge. Why? I mean, the bo- both of these companies have <laughs> like huge why? footprints. I well, mean, yeah. Andrew, let me ask you this. So one of the things that, that was announced, or not really announced because you couldn't do that technically, but it came out through inside sources that Discovery's plan post-merger is to take the two streaming services, Discovery Plus and HBO Max, and, and merge them into one. And I think while they kind of, can consummate that process Mm because there's a lot of back-end stuff that needs to happen what they've what they're going to be doing is they're likely going to be offering some kind of a bundle package and recently cnn launched a cnn plus service so much like you have the disney package where Mm -hmm. you can get disney plus espn plus and uh hulu in the united states uh internationally i believe hulu is basically part of disney plus it's like under the star banner um but in the U.S., you can get those three streaming services packaged together, save some money. Now, Discovery Plus and HBO Max will, at the very in the interim at least, will become like some sort of a bundle deal, and then in right. the future will become one big service. 
what do you what are your thoughts about that? Like, what do you think about the, the just the content? Like, all of these yeah. networks and brands, all of them have content going into these streaming services, and now the two of them you can buy in a package. I think it's any move to consolidate is a good move, and I think we're going to see that on every side of the streaming war right now. But basically what you're doing is you're giving people the choice. You're going to be a Coke person. You're going to be a Pepsi person. And it's dumb, but some people, they pick a side and that's what they do. What's exciting about that is if you have a lot more offered under Discovery, you know, Warner Brothers Discovery um, or Disney, you're going to choose those, those shows, those movies um, based on their quality. And so ideally what this means for media and content is that the people who make the best content are going to be the people who control media. Um, so maybe we'll start seeing better stuff. If I had to put my money anywhere right now, the person in the lead would be uh, Apple TV. They, mm -hmm. They're really putting out some good uh, stuff right yeah. now. Do you, do you guys think they will lower um, subscription costs? for that because surely they need to compete um with the price in the price right? well i think so are they sure because because they've sorry, been go going up as you've noticed well the price for hbo max um they actually have sort of kept it much the same since they launched the service and then they actually off started offering last year or it might have been early this year an ad supported lower price tier so they've Warner Brothers were or Warner Media was already making an effort to you know to make it more economical for you to subscribe to HBO Max and Discovery Plus is much cheaper like it's about the same price as ESPN Plus I think it's like mm. 599 or somewhere around that much which is almost a quote almost one third around one third of what HBO Max's non ad supported tier is so but I'll be Disney honest. and Netflix gone up Netflix did go up yeah um, they did. And, and they're not they're not allowing um sharing anymore like you cannot share account with like your family for example without them having to pay for a separate subscription which marks really low on the toretto meter uh, <laughs> see what you did there um no but serious yeah i think there's there was an article that came out about that that they're going to recover like billions like m more well over a billion dollars of revenue annually just from they're going to charge a fraction of what you would it would cost for you to get netflix on your own if you were just an out-of-house user of somebody else's account um but even still they're going to recover like billions of dollars annually and so you can tell there's a lot of money being lost there because under the U end user agreement you technically are not allowed to share your credentials with anybody who's not living with you in your house it's just that streaming services have never been able to enforce that part of the the agreement now netflix is trying it out internationally they'll probably bring it up uh, to the u.s at some point and i'm sure then it's going to trickle down to a lot of the other streaming services but but talking about specifically this merger the hbo uh sorry the warner brothers discovery the new company david zaslav um or zaslav he's the president and ceo of warner brothers discovery now he was the president and ceo of discovery so largely what has happened is most of the leadership structure of discovery has taken over and become like you know the leaders of this new company and some leaders from warner brothers or warner media are still around whereas like and and sarnoff and um jason killar jason killar was the president and ceo of warner Media and Anne Sarnoff was the president and CEO of the networks and broadcast like at Studios Group, and both of them are gone. But they have kept Toby Emmerich around, who's the who's the uh, I believe the, the 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 president or whatever his position name is. He's the leader, the person in charge at Warner Brothers, the movie studio. So the announcement here it says today's announcement marks, which today was Friday. An exciting milestone, not just for Warner Brothers Discovery, but for our shareholders, our distributors, adv advertisers, creative partners, and most importantly, consumers globally. The reason I bring this statement up is David Zaslav is going to be a key in, I think, turning Warner Brothers fortunes around, Warner Media's fortune around, fortunes around. Because when you look at the way he has run Discovery, like Andrew, you brought this up just a few minutes ago that discovery you would 
still probably do a double take thing. Wait, what? Discovery bought yeah. Warner Media, not the other way around. Well, there's a reason for that, like because Discovery has been climbing up the ranks in the business world and just the way they run their media business they've always in the green like they're never in the red they're making money it's high value content so they're, they're a good business exactly they know how to do and business and they know their yeah. retirement was really good i mean retirement <laughs> yeah. is that right yeah, well uh, okay like jason killis uh i remember that from the research that they actually got huge checks because obviously they were kind of let go from their position yeah. mm -hmm. well they were they, 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 they got like golden invested. parachutes you know like yeah. like they <laughs> in fact there were stories coming out like as late as last year um saying that jason color was most likely going to be gone and he's negotiating his exit package or whatever that worked out to be um so that was a long time coming it was just he made it official this past week but Guys, David Zasloff, I think, is probably one of the smartest executives working in the media industry. And mm -hmm. in an industry where Bob Iger is no longer running Disney, the man who basically took Disney from the one that was, you know, making... What was what was that Nicolas Cage movie about prisoners on a plane? What was, what was that name of that film? Um, back in oh, the early 2000s? I know what you're talking about. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, it's on the top of my... Um, Total loss, I have no idea. <laughs> But the rock? super obscure. Con Air. <laughs> con, con Air. Air. Yeah. Con it's, Air. A play, it's a play on words, Con Air, because yeah. they're all cons. Um, but Disney, like in the 80s and 90s, like in the 90s when uh, Bob Iger took over, was sort of like their movies were, you know, the animated movie, the best of the golden age of Disney animated movies were sort of behind us. He obviously had like The Lion King and stuff, but mm -hmm. Disney was not what it is today. And Bob Iger took it from there. And Pirates of the Caribbean's acquisition of Pixar, um, buying Marvel, buying um, Lucasfilm, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and all the Pixar stuff you see today, yeah. launching Disney+, Plus, making that his like, big last project on his way out. Bob Iger took Disney from being a very small player to basically being far away, far and away the most influential, biggest mm. movie studio and media company um, in the world today. So David Zasloff, I think, has the best acumen outside of that, but you know what Bob Iger used to command. And now that he's no longer running but, a company in the space, I think David Zasloff gives a big advantage to Warner Brothers Discovery. But there was there was this very interesting article in Variety, I remember, where they compared Bob Iger and uh, David Zasloff. And Bob Iger was a bigger people's person essentially he made a lot of good friends that's yeah. why a lot of the shows and films were really successful because of his influence and lately there's been like some controversy because apparently they don't take care as well as their stars and actors as yeah. uh, Bob Iger did like he's been like really taking care of them yeah no um, yeah D Bob Iger put the, the creatives in charge they like they led their divisions and studios and everything whereas uh, Bob Chapek has installed a lot of people from financial backgrounds and just corporate business backgrounds in those leadership positions and taken a lot of that control away from the creatives. I mean, Roland, you're a creative. We, I, we know I you direct do. movies. Um, I do. <laughs> from a, like from a business standpoint, it, it you know, Bob Iger did so much for Disney over the years to take it from, again, very small company relative to what it is today over the course of the last couple of decades. And a lot of it was because the leadership style was make sure the creatives are happy. So, mm -hmm. and not do it at the expense of, you know, business and, and, and middlemen and corporate ideology. Roland, what do you think about like that kind of a philosophy? Because that's exactly what David Zaslav and Discovery have been doing over the years. And now DC, CNN, you know, Cartoon Network, all of that stuff is under that same leadership. What kind of potential do you see Warner uh, you know, Brothers Discovery having under this new leadership? I mean, letting the creative do their thing is the most important thing you can do. Uh, film industry is definitely a business, and we can never forget that because they never let us forget that. But mm. the whole point of making a movie is to show the creative vision. And it's hard to do that when there's producers and people put in these leadership roles where they think that because they're in a creative field that they themselves are a creative, which is not the case. And it always ends up toxic and confusing. And it, it'll be nice. 
don't know, it'll be interesting to see this approach and seeing what kind of material and um, media we'll get from them. If I, yeah. if I had to say anything um, in terms of just a gut feeling for them, um, I think it would be a really good move to stop trying to compete with Disney and mm. to actually, you know, to be a completely different kind of um, entity. I think any, any effort to imitate what Disney is currently doing um, would eliminate the choice that they actually have, the opportunity to give people a choice um, to choose between the Disney stuff and something that's could be a healthy alternative or just you know better different content um they have a chance to really differentiate themselves and create a superior product if they want to yeah i mean and and almost every respect like one of the graphics i put up uh, let me see if i can bring it back up here because i know you brought up apple tv plus right mm -hmm. one of warner brothers uh and warner media or i guess you can call them warner brothers now um one of their strengths throughout the years has been television. There's a lot of shows, a lot of premium shows and streaming services that are not like HBO or HBO Max, but their shows produced by Warner Brothers Television. Ted mm -hmm. Lasso is one of them. And there's countless more that people are probably not aware of. Like, for example, you have Friends, like, you know, obviously sitcoms, like they've always produced great sitcoms, but they've produced a lot of great television over the years. And, and that's one of those things where, again, you know, now Discovery comes in, they're bringing in a different side of television that Warner Brothers doesn't excel in themselves, like reality TV, and they're the kings of reality TV, and you combine those mm. two. I think there's a lot of good stuff that can happen here because both companies and the now one big company can lean into their strengths and, and fill in their weaknesses. Like, for example, Discovery Plus uh, gets a lot of its traffic in the afternoon hours because that's a lot of their programming. It's just, you know, yeah. stuff you put on and you just let it sit there. HBO Max, most of this traffic is in the evening hours because it's like movies and like premium scripted TV. So there's not a whole lot of overlap there, which is why I think they decided to combine the two services together and provide even greater value to the consumer and their plan is not to invest 150 percent of their revenue from the streaming service right back into content they're like we want to run in the green from the get-go because mm -hmm. unlike other studios who are spending way more than you know they're making we have you know tens of billions of dollars of debt that we just inherited from Warner media to to get rid of so we're gonna do it by running this business sustainably much like we have always run discovery and that's what i love about you know th this this whole thing I, I really do believe and and even like i think some people are like well hey can can we can we now restore the snyderverse can we can we get the air cut and i don't think there's any promises being made anywhere but the I'll snyderverse you, really we need this snyder let's let's start fresh let's do something new no, well, no, what I'm trying to say is I think now you're in a position where if that indeed does come to fruition, I would trust the people behind the scenes in terms of their intentions and their plan. Because a lot of that stuff in the past, like this, the Snyder Cut was like a money grab and it didn't work. Whereas I think if they do something now, they will have more of a plan behind it. And I think so it worked. It. Well, it, it worked. didn't like... It it was it worked in terms of like drawing of you know it, I, it was, was successful but it wasn't successful they really had to fight for that so go ahead yeah i was gonna say the snyder cut was more about fan satisfaction because they really didn't want to do that and they had to you know i was one of those guys i mean <laughs> you can't really do much as a fan all you can do is really you know do a lot of tweets do a lot of hashtags you know try to talk <laughs> to many people but it articles. worked but it worked, yeah. you know, they finally listened after not listening to their fans for a while. So I don't know if that was a, a cash grab because I think if it was, they would have made more of a deal about it. Exactly. That makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, that was the beauty of it. I that, like, it wasn't one of the greatest films of all time, but it just shows how, how much fans opinion matters actually to, some filmmakers out there yeah. it's actually a great great example of a film actually succeeding even though it wasn't the best film like those films can they are what they are essentially 
they're there for, for a purpose to, yeah. to serve certain type of audience and fans. I enjoyed it. I thought it was 100% better. And, but yeah, anyway, how did well, we end up here? Yeah, I don't know. At, why are we talking about... Um, no, no, I was just bringing it up. That was oh, the yeah. last point that I was trying to make about this new merger. But, but Andrew... But why um, not do something new? Like literally what Andrew said. Why not take this opportunity? And literally what you guys have been saying, all those streaming services, they should just literally fight for the best content out there. And I'm really, really excited because that means we're going to have a lot to choose from in the next few, like coming, upcoming months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah. HBO had a lot of, a lot of different uh, companies under it. So they all have different types of content. I'm very excited to see what they do with Adult Swim because I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys have been keeping up with that, but they, Adult Swim has always been known for like trying to stay fresh and creative. And I hopefully mm -hmm. they, they try to, give it a big thumbs up and maybe give it a little more budget. I don't, I don't know. I'm not trying to make any predictions, but I, I do like seeing, you know, them supporting the creatives and new content. Well, with seven nice. seasons of Rick and Morty promised, I think Adult Swim's probably going to be okay. <laughs> no, yes. I'm not going to get into it, but there's some really cool, like smiling friends. It's a very yeah. Zoomer humor, but uh, it's fun. 